Support is provided by the Florida Gulf Coast University College of Education, Edison State College School of Education, and the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program. I'm Cody. I'm Kyra. And I'm Riley. We're the host of Curious Kids. Welcome to our treehouse. There are a lot of people living on the Earth, like about 7 billion. And each one of us is leaving our very own eco footprint by what we eat, how we live, and how we travel. Not to mention all the other stuff we like to buy. So we were curious, what can we do to help lessen the impact our lifestyles have on the planet? And can we live on the Earth in a way that protects wildlife, our waters, and our wilderness? Each one of us can make a difference. Here's the footprint song to get us started. Ooh, I've got a footprint, so do you. It's not the one that's caused by my shoe. I'm talking about the footprint caused by my lifestyle. Yeah, talking about the one caused by my lifestyle. See, everybody living on this earth is gonna use up stuff from the day of February. Gotta eat food, gotta breathe some air. We'll drink something and live somewhere. And that is how we make it. Footprint caused by our lifestyle. Yeah, that is how we get the footprint caused by our lifestyle. So let's start with food, cause everyone knows it's food that makes our bodies grow. Do you eat every scrap put on your plate? Or do you let it go to waste? Oh, Eating locally grown food helps to reduce the footprint caused by our lifestyle because the food doesn't have to be transported long distances before getting to our plates. Plus, it supports our local farmers. We wanted to make a salad with locally grown produce, so we visited Wooden Farm near Punta Gorda. Miss Elisa, who works there, took us into the fields to pick our vegetables right from the ground. To harvest lettuce, you lift it up until you can see the stem and you cut it off. Yeah. And if there are any lettuce leaves that we think we should leave behind, we can put them at the bottom of our bucket. Since Warden Farm is an organic farm, I was curious to know what that means. What is organic? Organic means that we do not use any pesticides or herbicides and that we farm using safe practices that protect the workers, the farm, and the environment. It didn't take us long to fill up the bucket. All right, the next step is to harvest some nasturtiums, which are edible flowers. Wait a minute, did she say flowers? Are we going to eat flowers? Keep going until you see a nice, full plant. So to pick these nasturtiums, you just pull up on the flower and they'll pop off. And if you lay them gently in your container, they won't get smushed. Why are we picking these? Well, nasturtiums are completely edible, and you can add them to a salad for a spicy touch, or you can put them on desserts to make it really colorful. So can I try one right now? Absolutely. Let's all eat it. Ready? Three, two, one. Mmm. Very fresh. Kind of like peppery. Pep yeah. You can keep eating if you want. Hmm, not so sure about those, but they are pretty. Next up, tomatoes. Look for a plant with lots of nice, ripe red tomatoes. We'll focus on the ones that are on the plant because they're nice and fresh. The red ones will be the best for our salad. The top Whoa. Finally, we picked some radishes, and then it was time to make our salad. Wow, we had a lot of food. First, we had to wash everything. Then we picked and peeled, topped and tailed, until finally, we had a fantastic salad and all those leftover scraps. Well, before we sat down to eat our salad, we took them out to feed some friendly goats. I think they appreciated the snack. Nothing wasted here. This guy liked having his head scratched. It was time to make some salad dressing. Mix it into the salad. I think Riley's got the hang of it there. And serve it up. You can talk to your parents about buying locally grown produce at a farmer's market near you. Great salad, right from the farm. Mmm, that looked like a pretty good salad. Let's see what Miss Betsy has to say. 
From farm to family, the healthiest way to eat is fresh, fresh, fresh. When we enter a grocery store, most people don't even think that the produce has traveled from other states and as far as different countries just to reach our grocery basket. Most produce has traveled further than the average American travels in a year. That's a lot of environmental energy being wasted. Local farmers are not only harvesting the freshest organic produce, but their fruits and vegetables contain the richest of nutrients because they're picked at their peak and sold that same week. Eating local is like having a farm in your backyard. Good food needs nourishing soil to grow. The Garden at Eden in Naples is a farm that's getting some extra help from some interesting critters to make its soil rich and healthy. My brothers and I joined farm manager Captain John and his family to learn more. What kinds of vegetables are you growing here? We grow all kinds of vegetables. Everything's grown from the worms. Um, this is a type of rainbow shard. It's bright colored Swiss chard. What? Did he say worms? He did. How do worms help grow vegetables? What exactly is this? This is a worm colony where we compost our old food and vegetables and, we sh and shredded paper. We put the food into the bin and then we cover it with shredded paper. We move the top bedding and you can see there's lots of earthworms inside that eat the old food. That's a lot of worms. I'm a wriggly, wiggly worm living here in the earth. I wiggle, I squiggle, I squirm. Yes, all day long I work. I'm a Here's a couple fun facts about wriggly, wiggly worms. Red wiggler worms are usually used in composting bins. Worms breathe through their skin. Worms don't have teeth, so that's to put small bits of food into your composting bin. Worms have no eyes, but they do have light-sensitive cells in their skin. Those cells allow them to detect changes in light. Round in circles day and night, making soil with every bite. I'm a wriggly, wiggly, squiggly, wiggly worm. After the earthworms are done with the compost, that's the fertilizer we use to grow our vegetables. So why doesn't all this rotting food smell? Our worm system's designed specifically for Southwest Florida, and with a correct worm system, composting is easy and without any bad odor. So I can have one of these at home? This bin's perfect size to use at home, and you could take your kitchen scraps, and you could shred either your school paper or junk mail, and make all the fertilizer you need for your home garden. And the finished product is? In your hand is more living microorganisms than there are people on the earth. This is a very live fertilizer. Cool. This is a great way to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So next to water, what's the scoop? Don't it just flow in an endless loop? It goes up to the clouds, falls down in the rain, floats through lakes, rivers, oceans, then goes up again. Jake and I took a canoe trip on the Peace River with outdoor educator Mr. Kate and Nedza. We wanted to learn about the river habitat and also help clean up some of the trash. Here we are on the Peace River at Nocatee. Nocatee's in DeSoto County and it's about a third of the way up the watershed from Charlotte Harbor. Soon we were speeding along. I think Jake's got the paddling down. It's amazing how much easier it is to paddle when the motor's going. <laughs> Why is the river so brown colored? Well, the river is brown colored because of the tannic acid that's in it. Tannic acid is a chemical that comes out of the roots and the leaves of trees, and it has this brown color. Oh, look, a tire. There's a tire over here. That's one type, one type of pollution that we find in the Peace River. Time to get out and begin the cleanup. We soon had that old tire in the canoe. Every little bit hurts. What is the craziest thing you found in this river? The craziest thing I found in the river? Well, there was the toilet. You found a toilet in the river? Yeah, we found a toilet in the river. We found a bedpan in the river. But I guess the craziest thing we found in the river was a car. You found a whole car? A whole car. It was so beautiful out there on the water. Hard to imagine why anyone would want to dump stuff in it. But when we paddled into the shore, it didn't take us long to find more trash. We're not only polluting it for people, but we're also polluting it for other life forms. Yep, for example, animals. Yeah, animals, birds, fish, alligators even. 
Is that why it's important to keep all the water in the watershed clean? Yes, exactly, Jake. Anytime a can is dropped anywhere, whether it's in uh, parts of Fort Myers or whether it's all the way up at Winter Haven, it could wash down a ditch and into a creek and into the river and eventually down into Charlotte Harbor itself. We dragged some nets along the bottom to see what else we would find. We got lots of styrofoam and some mud. Uh oh, styrofoam? Yeah. Oh, and that's all broken up too, isn't it? Oh, it could be Gross. Was there nothing but trash There's in the river? Wait a minute. What's this? Cool. I dare you to touch it. What is that? That is an insect larva called a Dobson fly. Dobson. It would turn into a Dobson fly. It's called a Helgamite in the larva stage. Did you catch that? A Dobson fly in its larval stage is called a Helgamite and lives in the river for a couple of years before turning into an adult fly which can grow to be three to four inches long and only lives for about seven days. Why is the river important to him? Well, because his mother came and laid eggs in the river many months ago, and now he's hatched out and he's living on the river bottom, and then he climbs out of the river and turns into an adult, has wings and flies away. Without clean water in the river, then he would not exist. But wait a minute, I thought insects only had six legs. This little guy's got way more than six. Oh, but look, he it's does have six. He's got his front legs, he's got his middle legs, he's got his back legs, and all of these things are not real legs. Oh, They're, they're called fake legs, they're called pseudopods. Oh. And when he turns into a full adult insect, all he's going to have left is the six legs that insects have, and all of these will disappear and that will just become the abdomen. Of Does the he insect. have eyes? Yeah, he has eyes. He's looking at you. He said, oh, look at that big monster in the orange life jacket. Let's make sure we put him back to keep him safe. Okay, are we ready to turn him loose? Yeah. Off he went. One little insect grateful for a clean river. He may be small, but he plays an important role in the web of life. Jake and I had fun on the river that day, and we were glad we could help clean it up a little. There are some very cool birds that live in our neighborhoods, so Jasmine, Riley, and Raphael went to see what's being done to protect their habitats. Miss Pasha loves burrowing owls. Well, who wouldn't? They're really cute little birds and they live right here in Cape Coral. In fact, they're the official city bird. So you can see that the owl is in there, oh, that may be the female, and she's in there trying to get the nest ready. They have yellow eyes. They have yellow eyes and brown eyes and hazel eyes. Why do burrowing owls burrow? Burrowing owls burrow because that's where they lay their eggs. And instead of going to a tree to build a nest, they prefer to go underground to lay their eggs. Oh. And it's good protection for them. Burrowing owls eat all the little things you find on the ground. They eat cockroaches, they eat lizards, they eat crickets, they eat all these creepy crawly things that we don't care for. They're pretty much anything on the ground. They kind of keep the insect population down and the rat population down. There is one kind of weird habit the owls have. Is anybody interested in to know why they collect dog poop? I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, the theory is, is that dog poop um, disguises the nest and it discourages predators such as possums or raccoons that might want to eat the eggs. And also it brings bugs so that when the owl comes out, he has a little snack. Do uh, burrowing owls originate in Florida or do they come from somewhere else? Burrowing owls come from Canada all the way down to South America, east and west coast. Cape Coral has the largest population east of the Mississippi. Wow. And the reason for that is because we have the ideal habitat for them. Is this the burrowing owl's most common habitat? This is their normal habitat. They like sandy soils so they can dig. They like the plains. They like grassy open fields. And Cape Coral is perfect for that. Is it true that the owls spin their head all the way around? Well, yes, they can spin their head around, and the reason for that is they don't have eye muscles like what we have, where we can just turn our eyes. So when they look at something, they literally have to move their whole neck around. I was curious to know how we can protect the owls. Well, what we ask kids in Cape Coral to do is, um, if they see a burrow that's not marked, if you see here it's staked out, yes. is to call Cape Coral Friends of Wildlife or to call the city and we will come out and we will stake it out and that protects it. That protects lawnmowers from running over it or people from accidentally stepping on it. Another bird that can use our help is the Florida scrub jay. Jasmine went with Miss Pasha to another part of Cape Coral to meet this amazing bird up close. 
What do the scrub jays eat? The scrub jays eat little snakes, they'll eat little bugs, they can eat mice, sometimes they'll eat seeds if there's seeds around. How can we protect them? The best way to protect the Florida scrub jay, which is unique to Florida, is to start restoring the habitat that has been destroyed due to development. And by planting the right trees... They like scrub habitat. That's why they're called scrub jay. So what is a scrub? It's where small shrubs and different kinds of oak trees grow in sandy soil. The jays like to eat acorns or bury them in the sand for a future snack. Just like us, these birds are curious. This one seemed to want to be on our show. It's sure like the camera. Cats are big predators of birds, so perhaps some of us with cats might consider keeping them indoors or even taking them out on a leash. Get to know the birds in your backyard. They can be pretty friendly. Ooh, I've got a footprint, so do you. It's not the one that's caused by my... Do you ever wonder how stuff seems to multiply? Even after you give your house a good spring clean. I know my mom complains about all the stuff we still have. Somebody actually made a movie called The Story of Stuff. Her name is Miss Annie Leonard. We were curious to know about what gave her the idea of making a movie about stuff. So we called her on Skype. Well, I first got really interested in stuff um, when I went to college in New York City. And have, if any of you guys have ever been to New York City, there is garbage all over the street there. It's just totally incredible. So I started opening the bags and looking inside to see what was there. And there was all this good stuff there, like paper and books and shoes. And I thought, what the heck is going on? So I challenged myself to figure out a new way to talk about stuff that isn't all boring. And so that's how I made the Story of Stuff film. In the film, Miss Annie shows how stuff costs more than we think. Yes, we might only see the price tag in the store, but behind that dollar sign are more costs to the planet, like all the natural resources being used in the manufacturing, or the pollution that can result from production, and finally, all the waste that ends up in the landfills. How long did it take to make the movie? Well, it really took 20 years to make that movie. Wow. Because, um, for because it really is the summary of 20 years of work and reading and research. I mean, I actually got a job working on garbage. And this mm -hmm. job was so interesting because it allowed me to go to other countries to see where our garbage was going. I went to 40 countries um, trying to put together the pieces of the puzzle to understand where our stuff comes from and where it goes. Miss Annie is currently working on a new PBS Kids TV show called Loop Scoops to get kids thinking more about where the stuff in our lives comes from and where it's going. It's so easy to buy, you know, a new toy, a new piece of clothing, a new shoe, mm -hmm. whatever, and use it for a little while and then say, I'm bored with it and just throw it away. Mm -hmm. Also, that some other kids in some countries would enjoy those and just think about it, you're just throwing it out the window. Some of our curious kids donated their used toys, clothes, and electronics to a thrift store in Naples. We wanted to recycle them into someone else's hands and support a community organization. Checking out thrift stores with a few friends can be a fun way to find some pretty neat stuff. Looks like Aaliyah's found a cute summer dress. What's the most important message we can give to kids? The most important thing that young people and old people, everybody needs to realize, is that it really is possible to do things better. I think if people don't believe it's possible to make change, then it's harder to fight for it. So the most important thing to know is that we absolutely can do things better, and the way to do it better is by working together for change. Because mm -hmm. if you say, I can, you'll do it, but if you say, I can't, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Thank Bye. you so Thank much. You so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for having these really important conversations. This is the most important thing we can be doing, and together we really will build a better future. Yep. Thank you. See, everybody living on this earth is going to use up stuff from the day of ever. Got to eat food, got to preserve it. The Golisano Children's Museum of Naples, also known as Come On, is a great place to visit and learn. One of the ways the museum reduces its eco footprint is by using green energy. This means electricity comes from renewable sources. So it is a renewable source. Let's find out. One place that we can actually get renewable energy from is not from this planet, and it actually lights up our sky every day. If you look out the window, you can see it. Anybody know what it is? The sun? 
Very good, Haley. How does it do that? Good question, Alex. Well, what happens is we get what we call a solar panel, like this one right here. And the solar panel is focused into the sunlight, and it collects photoelectrons, which means that it collects energy from the sun. In this case, with the circuit that I've created, uh, this solar plant panel can actually make this voice recorder beep. How long would it take for it to collect enough energy? You want to try it? Yeah. All right, so I want you to take this Aaliyah and I want you to point the solar panel towards the sunlight. Should I go over? Mm hmm And see what happens. So will it work? It does. There's the beep. The museum's solar panels are on top of the roof, so we weren't able to see them. What would be another source of energy? Well, another way that we can actually produce electricity is by harnessing the energy of the wind. So what we can do in order to create electricity is we can create something called a wind turbine that works kind of like a windmill. Alex used a hairdryer to turn this turbine, and the movement created electricity, which turned on the light. You see it lighting up? Yeah. So once it goes fast enough and has enough wind on it, the light actually lights up. The museum's turbine looks a little different, but it is turning. So doesn't that mean it has to be windy all the time? Actually not, because with, with this type of energy, as with solar energy, we can actually store some of that wind energy and some of that solar energy up in batteries. Before leaving, we checked out the green construction exhibit. There are all kinds of cool recycled materials there. And finally, Miss Hallie showed us something that really helps the museum keep track of its eco footprint. We can look at this interactive and it will tell us every day how much solar energy we've used, how much water we've consumed, and how much wind energy we've used. It's pretty cool. Here's a few things we can all do to help reduce our eco footprint. Instead of throwing them away, recycle soda cans and plastic bottles. Even better, use a reusable one. Recycle electronics like computers and cell phones. Use cloth bags instead of plastic. Together, we can make a difference. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland includes England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and various territories and protectorates. WGCU's Curious Kids producer, Rosie Emery, is British and grew up in England, so we asked her to share some memories from her country. Would you like a spot of tea? We always used to stop for tea in England around ooh, four o'clock for tea and biscuits. Oh, would you like a biscuit? Sure. There you go. What was your favorite thing about growing up in England? Oh, my favorite thing about growing up in England was the countryside. My parents lived in a place called Thorsby Park, home to Thorsby Hall. And I was really lucky because I had a pony, so I spent lots of time outdoors. The park was near Sherwood Forest, where the legendary outlaw Robin Hood and his band of merry men are rumored to have lived. And there's a really special oak tree in the forest. It's called the Major Oak. Thought to be about 800 years old, the tree is hollow inside. What about the queen? Did you ever see her? Oh, just on the telly. That's English for TV. Of course, she had her royal wave. Can you do the royal wave? Have you ever seen the royal wave? <laughs> yeah, the royal wave. Her Royal Highness, Elizabeth II, is the Queen of England. And when she's in London, she lives at Buckingham Palace. What are some of the things that people in England do to protect the environment? Well, there are a lot fewer cars. Lots of people take trains and buses. And of course, London is home to the famous double-decker bus. So what do Brits like to eat? Miss Rosie said that their one favorite English meal is fish and chips. And let's not forget the British sandwich named after John Montague, fourth Earl of Sandwich, and sometimes called a Sarney. Wow, I can't wait to visit London. Me too. Cheerio then. Get up, get up, get out. We can learn to appreciate nature more by spending time outdoors, especially quiet time when we can just slow down and connect with natural rhythms, like this one. Um... Very good, Riley. Let's see what the rest of the class is like. Yoga instructors Mr. Allen and Miss Allie's favorite place to practice yoga, have a little fun, and play some music is on the beach. So that's where we met up with them for our special Curious Kids yoga class. Don't ever think that you can't do something. Just think you can't do it yet, because you are you have unlimited 
potential. We all have the capability of doing anything that we want to if we set our minds to it and we really focus. And if you just practice something enough, it will come with time. Stand like this now with your feet together and your arms just by your sides with your palms facing out. Relax your shoulders and close your eyes. It felt really good just being quiet and listening to the waves. And then become aware of your breath. Just notice your breath coming in and going out. Something we take for granted. We don't think about how essential breathing is. Take a deep breath. Lift your arms up, little back bend, bring your hips forward, drop your head back. Exhale, reach forward as you come down. Two, forward bend. Modern yoga has evolved from the Hindu spiritual practice of India. The different breathing exercises and body postures are believed to promote health and relaxation. The word yoga comes from the ancient Indian language of Sanskrit and means union. What's the key to balancing? The first thing is, everyone look at this shell in the center of the circle. Okay, focus right at that shell. Now, start to lift one leg up toward your chest. Keep your focus, don't lose your focus. Keep your focus. You're there, you're still there. Okay, take that leg, that same leg that you're holding and bring it back into tree pose, slowly. Keeping your mind focused on something definitely helps you balance. Uh-oh, Samari is losing it. Okay, she got it back. See how that helps to look down and focus right there? Did that help you? Not so sure it was helping Jake. Mr. Allen and Miss Allie sometimes work as yoga clowns and their ability to focus certainly helps them do amazing tricks. I got to learn how to spin a Chinese yo-yo. That sure takes some arm muscle. Practicing yoga there on the beach really helped me connect to my body and the ocean. It was pretty special. Every little cell in my body. Nothing like food picked straight from the source. That Sally we made at Warden Farm was as local as it gets. Maybe you should get a worm composter. <laughs> Those red wigglers make good soil. Wiggly wiggly worms. I love the yoga on the beach. It's incredible what can be done with just focus and practice. Those owls were so cute. I wish one lived by my house. Protecting wildlife in our local neighborhoods is very important. That's right, and like Miss Annie said, let's think more about where this stuff comes from in our lives and where it's going. Yeah, like cars and other trash in our rivers. But you know, if we all do our part, we can reduce our eco footprint. How about we all get reusable bottles? Yeah. Or use a cloth bag instead of plastic. I've got mine. I've got a footprint, so do you. It's not the one that's caused by my shoe. See you next time.